Have you ever been hanging out with a friend and ask them, Hey, do you remember this cartoon? And they respond with, Oh my god, I totally forgot that was even a thing until you brought it up. That's what we're going to be looking at today. Cartoons from the past that, for one reason or another, never really stood out, and eventually just kind of faded from our memories. Whether the shows be good or bad, one thing that they all have in common is that they were all pretty forgettable. So join me today as we look at seven of them. Why seven? Because I literally just rolled some dice and that's what came up. <laughs> Who here remembers the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy? Hopefully everyone. It was one of my favorite shows on Cartoon Network and was insanely popular. But, before there was the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy, there was a little show called Grim and Evil. It's days like this that I wish my real body hadn't exploded! Making its debut on Cartoon Network on August 24, 2001, the show had a pretty interesting concept. Here's how it worked. A normal cartoon takes up a 30-minute time slot. Within that 30-minute time slot, the first 15 minutes would be an episode of Billy and Mandy, back when the show's animation style and voice actors were still finding their footing. It seems to be a swirling vortex of pure evil coming out of your floor. After the episode ended, we'd cut to commercial. When we'd come back, we would be watching a completely different cartoon, Evil Con Carne. Hence, Grim and Evil. Evil Con Carne was created and written by the same person who made Billy and Mandy, Maxwell Adams. Evil Con Carne follows evil genius Hector Con Carne, bent on world domination. He's the brain, by the way. Body with which I will dominate the world. Most of the episodes involve the characters trying to take over the world. Unfortunately, though, they're all insanely dysfunctional, so it never really works out. Cartoon Network eventually split up the Grim and Evil show and gave Billy and Mandy and Evil Con Carne their own separate shows. Billy and Mandy did great, lasting six seasons with two movies. Evil Con Carne, however, was eventually cancelled pretty early on, only having 13 episodes. This was because, apparently, Cartoon Network saw more potential in the grim adventures of Billy and Mandy, and didn't want the competition from its own creator. It's cruel and unusual. Ah oh, well, it's like Mandy says. It is not enough to succeed. Others, Others must, must fail. fail. Here's a show that you may or may not remember, but has a totally awesome theme song that I'm totally gonna play for you right now! Wayside was a Nickelodeon cartoon series released on November 19th, 2005. The show follows our main character, Todd. But no, I, I just transferred here from another school. It's kind of a long story. Todd is your everyday young boy who gets transferred to a new school, called Wayside. Wayside is a 30-story school that was accidentally... built sideways. Well, this school was supposed to be one story high, one floor, with 30 classrooms, all in a row. But the Builder Man, he goofed. Instead, he built it like 30 stories high, with one classroom on each floor. I don't know, I hope someone was fired for that. But regardless, the school and everyone in it is very unique. Hey, you're the new kid! <laughs> Enough of the fun! Wayside is very MC Escher-like, where the laws of physics don't apply. The students and faculty are just as eccentric and quirky as the school itself. It was a challenging assignment, children. I feel like a lot of people can really connect to Wayside, being the new kid and feeling like such an outcast. Oh, look, it's a monkey! That's not a monkey, Mrs. Jules! That's the new kid! <laughs> or heck, maybe you were never a new kid, but still feeling like such an outcast when compared to everyone else. But despite all of that, making the best out of your situation, finding crazy friends and having fun. No matter how old you are, the show immediately puts you back in elementary school and exaggerates all the fun experiences you had. And like Todd says, I wouldn't change a thing. Oh, 
god, shut the hell up! Welcome to my very own show! I'll introduce my friends to you! No, damn it! I hate this show! And now, to today's story! Ugh. Angela Anaconda was a dumb show released in 1999 on Nickelodeon or something, I don't know. I don't think anyone ever liked this show, and if you did, then that's okay. Stupid idiot. The show followed squeaky voice dumbass Angela Anaconda doing whatever eight-year-olds do. Typical kids doing regular things because they're regular kids formula. The show's biggest problem is the art style. It's so ugly and full of nightmare fuel. Angela Anaconda primarily features cutout animation, kind of like South Park, where everything looks like it's made of paper. That in and of itself could have made the show stand out when compared to the Nickelodeon lineup at the time. The problem, however, comes from the characters' faces! They're all actual pictures of children and actors, with their faces superimposed on their bodies, making the dumbest and most punchable faces I've ever seen in my life. Well, Miss Anaconda. <laughs> that goes for everyone in this stupid show. It's not so bad, Angela. Now, you might be saying to yourself, Wow, Connor, that's a little mean, don't you think? I mean, remember, these are actual kids we're talking about. And you know what? Maybe if they weren't so ugly, I wouldn't have to make fun of them. No, no, don't do this. I'm sorry. Things kind of got out of hand. Angela Anaconda was a weird show with weird artwork and terrible voice acting. Gah, have I mentioned that yet? This salami's baloney! The show was destined to fail, and I'm very glad that it did. Nick, 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 Nickelodeon! Okay, let's get that bad taste out of our mouth and look at something cool. Robot Jones. Hmm, whatever did happen to Robot Jones? Probably cancellation. Whatever happened to Robot Jones was a very charming show airing on Cartoon Network in the early 2000s. The show follows Robot Jones, who is a robot, living in a small city in Delaware, simply trying to have a normal childhood amongst the humans. Robot Jones is a very charming and innocent character. He's a robot with human emotions, simply trying to fit in and make friends. And he does. They spend the majority of the show trying to help Robot Jones fit in and understand human society. How do you always get A's? It is not a challenge. I simply provide the correct answers to the questions. Robot Jones has a really charming art style in my opinion. It's a throwback to older cartoons back in the 70s and 80s, like Schoolhouse Rock for example. It is very messy and rough, which can be a turnoff for some people, but I think it works really well. What is the difference between girls and boys anyway? Whatever Happened to Robot Jones was very popular at the time. During the weekend of August 25th through the 27th of the year 2000, Cartoon Network aired 10 pilot episodes of up-and-coming cartoons, where the fans could vote and tell them their favorite. The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy came in first, but Robot Jones came in second place. Not too bad. Robot Jones doesn't have the name power like Billy and Mandy, and while we may not always remember the show, It'll never be truly forgotten. Apparently, the hardest equations to figure out are that of the human condition. Oh my god! I love the Rugrats! How could you not? Cute babies going on adventures? The Rugrats was one of Nickelodeon's top shows of all time, but when it came to an end, they started a spin-off show, All Grown Up. Which, I'll be honest, I personally loved at the time, but it was probably the nostalgia goggles that I refused to take off! It did have a cool theme song, though. But, that's not what we're talking about today. No, we're talking about the other Rugrats spin-off show. Piece of cake. I can act triangles around Savannah. You don't remember it? Rugrats Preschool Days? The spin-off show following Angelica and Susie? The two characters nobody cares about? 
following them in preschool. Those play parts are small and who cares? Others are more important -er, like for me. Angelica was unlikable. We weren't supposed to care about her because she constantly tormented the babies. So now we have a Rugrats show following her and Susie. Simply going to preschool. I'm the bestest preschooler, so I better get the bestest chore this time. They weren't babies, so they didn't have this crazy imagination where everything became an adventure. It was literally just, Okay class, it's picture day! Or, it's recess time. The show only had four episodes before eventually being taken off the air. And honestly, it was probably for the best. Hi, hi, Puffy Yami Yumi. I love this show. Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi follows two pop stars, Ami, the cute and upbeat kawaii waifu 2017. I say we go this way, with the rainbows. And Yumi, the sarcastic punk rock bad girl. Ami, stop talking. All I ever hear is Ami, Ami, Ami. The show and characters themselves are actually based on the real life Japanese pop stars, Puffy Ami Yumi. You might be asking yourselves, who are they? And why did they get a TV show here in America? Well, they did make a name for themselves here in the States, with one song that I think you may know. know yup, they're the voices of the Teen Titans theme song. One of the coolest things about Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi was that the viewers would be exposed to a lot of Japanese culture. The script and the majority of the episodes are all written and voiced in English. However, when the characters have one word reaction to whatever's happening in the episode, they'll say it in Japanese. One of the weirder segments in the show was before the cartoon would begin and after the episode ended. We would have these live action segments of Ami and Yumi just hanging out. These were so weird, yet really charming. Even the English voice actors learned a ton of Japanese during the show. The show reached its end on October 2nd, 2006, lasting three seasons. But the weird thing is, is that the final five episodes never aired in America, but did everywhere else in the world. Have I lost my good decision-making mojo? Which is weird, because Hi Hi Puffy Ami Yumi scored the highest ever kids ages 2 to 11 rating on Cartoon Network of all time. Let's celebrate with rock! Oh well. Puffy Ami Yumi, you'll always live on in my heart. Well, take out an ad! An ad? Yeah! A beautiful whale, seek strong adventurer type <laughs> to protect her. The Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. This rock, recently discovered by me. Flapjack was the first Cartoon Network show to have that weird, random, lulzy, what the f type of humor. Similar to regular show. It's kind of like if you took regular show and turned the dial up to 11. The marvelous misadventures of Flapjack followed a young boy named Flapjack, who was raised by a whale named Bubby, and hangs out with his pirate friend Captain Knuckles, who he also goes on adventures with. In honor of my buddy Flapjack, save your and storm along. It was a little too weird and offbeat for most people. This kind of cartoon style hadn't really been established yet, so it kind of had a niche audience. I'll be honest, when the show first came out, I hated it! Mainly because of things like this. <sighs> that sure was fun, aren't you? What the hell was that? What is that? Why would they do that? The humor, writing, and art style all kind of resemble an extreme version of regular show. If you think I'm comparing Flapjack to regular show a lot, it's because one of the main creative directors of Flapjack was J.G. Quintel, the creator of regular show. It kind of makes sense now. Flapjack is mainly infamous for its weird moments. 
Yeah, like that. Prove it! Kiss my big toe! And that. <laughs> yeah, okay, and that. Flapjack was weird, but it had its fans, and was honestly the catalyst for pushing the boundaries of what a child's cartoon could be, and has helped create the cartoon network that we know today. Whether that be a good thing, or a bad thing, is all up to you.